true for France, for the US, for the UK, Australia, Italy. Um, these are all countries where we are under judicial assault. Our comrades are being dragged off the street by people who seem to love their car much more than anything else in the world. Um, and people are getting locked up. At the same time, we're building fossil fuel infrastructure to burn another 50 years of fossil fuels. And we'll, like, um, we're not protecting the climate as in actually reducing emissions, but in the climate catastrophe, we're expanding fossil fuel infrastructure. And um, we've decided that climate policy consists not in protecting the climate, but in protecting society from the people who remind you that there is a climate catastrophe. Right? <coughs> That's kind of the context, I come from. 15 years of struggle on the climate movement, and right now we're getting our asses kicked very, very hard by a society that feels like, fucking hell, finally we can tell these climate people to fuck off. We've been wanting to do this for ages. Right? Same with the queers and trans folks. They've always had this cultural hegemony, and now we can finally tell them that we've always hated them, we've never wanted to change. Right? And that's kind of the society I'm facing. So you can see maybe there's a slightly different emotional affect. I've actually been dealing a lot with questions of grieving. I've been telling yesterday I had a five-hour discussion with a Conservative Party politician about climate on camera. And um, we talked about grief. I said, look, you can't tell me anything meaningful about the climate unless you've started a grieving process to say goodbye to the future of just more and more and more that we've been taught to expect as a result of 20 years of capitalism and 80 or 90 years of welfare, right? So, and I had a sort of climate depression for two and a half years, during which I took so many drugs that I thought it would be much more fun to just take drugs until the end of my life and have sex, and, which is much more attractive a proposition than, you know, being hunted by fascists and finally being killed in some exile, which, you know, has happened to some communist anti-fascist exiles in the past. So, <clears throat> I wanted to start you off with some really depressing shit. At the end, there's also going to be a kind of, a certain, there's a certain sort of a, a Spannungsbogen in here, but basically, uh, uh, there's a kind of a dramatic arc where I want to, in the end, get towards a kind of coalition of fighting and fucking against the fascists. <laughs> <laughs> Not fucking with the fascists, right? <laughs> uh, okay, now, how do I start? Yeah, no, see, I, I'm not into that. Anyway, but there's a, um, okay. The first point is, when I talk to you about sustainability, and no, so, sorry Martin, the question of whether or not this fest, the festival that you're going to is climate neutral is entirely irrelevant. I do not give a fuck to your personal climate, to anybody in the Philippines or Bolivia. They're like, well, right, so you're fucking for like no carbon, with no carbon. And 50 meters down, 50 kilometers down the road, they're building fossil fuel infrastructure. And you think that fucking carbon neutral, climate neutrally, is the thing to do, right? Okay, sure. Right, so, right, so sustainability is bullshit. We've been talking about it for 40 years, and it's a discourse that exists to make us feel better about not being sane. Right, it is a psychological repression, doesn't mean repression in German, but verdrängung in this case, right? It's a verdrängungsdiscourse. It's a discourse that allows us to oppress, or ignore, ignore, sublimate certain knowledges. Right. That being said, I've also talked about the fact that we're in a climate catastrophe. Um, so, things are going to, actually things are, or it's not like the climate catastrophe is going to happen. Uh, it's happening. You're aware of all the water conflicts everywhere. They are the direct result of the climate catastrophe, in part, but there are also other sociological crises like biodiversity loss, etc. So, in essence, fighting against ecological collapse. Well, that's a fight we have lost. Right? I, I mean, I, I, I know you, don't, you probably know this, but like everybody else, you don't really want to acknowledge it. This is terribly fucking depressing. Me. It took me two to three years of one of the deepest and nearly fatal depression of my life and nearly fatal depression to understand that and to accept, well, that fight is lost. Particularly because we live in a society that as more climate crisis and catastrophe happens, will not become more rational, which is what we traditionally assume, right? So there'd be like more climate catastrophe, more climate activism, and at some point society would say, oh my God, you're right. We haven't listened to you for 50 years, but now... Now, upon the 35th extreme weather event and the 89,000th road blockade, now we understand. 
Now we get it, now we're going to change our ways. That's not how verdrängung of repression happens. The more shit happens that you don't want to know, the more energy you're going to have to expend to ignore it. So if somebody then tries to remind you of that shit that you're trying to ignore, you're going to kick them in the face or elsewhere with even more force. Because why? Because you don't want to know what they're trying to tell you. And they're sitting in front of your car. And they're really annoying you, not by sitting in front of your car, because you always stand in front of your car. They're annoying you because they're the return of the repressed. That's incidentally also why we push migrants back in the, in, into the Mediterranean. Not just because we're afraid that they're going to take our money, but because they remind us of the fact that our societies, globally speaking, are behaving like amoral shitholes. So these are all facts. They'll sound a bit dramatic. But this is the reality of somebody who's been doing climate activism for 15 years, has been told by society, yeah, 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 you guys are, you're right, you're right, you're right. But the more the climate crisis escalates, the more climate the society goes, actually, nah, you weren't right. Because if you're right, we'd have to change everything about what we're doing. Therefore, you cannot possibly be right. Because we're definitely about to change this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, God, by the way, I was a total ADHD kid, so right now, I'm <laughs> 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 coursing through my body. People think I'm always high at these things. Unfortunately, I'm not. <laughs> right, okay. So we've got this society of repression, of sublimation. And the fun thing is, the perfect political superstructure for a society of sublimation is fascism. Right? Because if you want to ignore that you're being shit towards others, the best way is to not consider them others. To just not consider them human. It's the easiest way. Like, well, well, they're not people. We don't have to let them in here. We don't have to share with them. And the AFD, which in Germany right now is the second strongest party in the country, and probably is going to win a bunch of elections in eastern Germany in a few, in, in, in a few months next year. <clears throat> they are the perfect party for a society that doesn't want to acknowledge how shit it is. Because that party says, trans people don't exist. They say queers are inferior. The AFD says that climate change probably doesn't exist. If it does exist, we didn't do anything to cause it. If it does exist and we caused it, us not doing anything about it will not change anything. So therefore, uh, us doing anything about it will not change. Therefore, the AFD is the perfect political superstructure to the society I just described. Which means, all of this together, is not only are we facing a climate or an ecological catastrophe, we are also facing a massive onslaught of a fascist offensive around the world, and additional fun, that's a clerical fascist offensive. Right? There are different kinds of fascisms, historically. Now we're talking about a clerical, clerical religious fascism. Hindu fascism in India. Putin's clerical fascism in Russia. Bolsonaro was a clerical fascist. Trump was a clerical fascist. We've got, what's her name, Meloni... Orban, etc., and so forth. But these are some big countries that I've just named that are run by fascists or were run by fascists. And why am I telling you all this? Because essentially I'm saying we're going to have to stop this idea that the climate camp here and a positive sex positive festival there is anything but making us feel better about living in a fucked up shit world that we have to do everything to change because it is morally incumbent upon us. And this is essentially what I'm trying to say. How do we get from the extremely depressing story that I've just told to one that's not as depressing and where we can be fighting the fascists and fucking each other? <laughs> Which is clearly one of the goals. Right? Um, <laughs> now, my story is very personal in that none of what I'm telling you is something that occurs to me abstractly. I mentioned my deep depression, and I really, I remember I had a sort of vaguely abusive lover um, and I remember really, really asking him to just let me take drugs with him every day until we die because I found that a more attractive proposition than being hunted by fascists. I'm saying this because I was really close to rock bottom. Maybe not my drug consumption, but personally, I, I don't want to live my life. I don't want to be me anymore. I don't want to be in movement. I don't want to fight. I don't want all this fighting. I can't fucking hack it. And then I went to Lutz. I don't know if you know about Lutzerath. Can I see a quick show of hands, Lutzerath? Right. Lutzerath is a small, ugly village, was a small, ugly village <laughs> in the west of Germany, which is going to be um, torn down for to make way for a coal mine. And climate activists occupied it as a sort of center of resistance to this expanding fossil capitalism. And early January, the cops said they're going to evict it, and many, many climate activists traveled there to defend it. 
me amongst them. And I went there because when I woke up in the new year, Germany had become much more racist. So you remember the moral panic around the riots in Russia? And that moment, Lutzenat stood out in a darkening and cold world as a place of light and warmth that drew me, that attracted me like the moth calls the, like a moth is called to the light. I'm sorry, I, just, I know I just made a comrade cry there. It is, I, I totally understand you. I feel you, I feel like this every fucking day. I read the newspapers, my job three to five hours a day, and it's my daily fucking toxic bath, okay? Like, that is the world. Like, not verdrenging, not repressing this world means having this reaction, because unless you have that reaction, you don't know the world, you don't engage with it, and you're probably an asshole, so... <laughs> so this, your try, crying is a sign of your strength and your openness and your power. So, uh, okay, now what can we do? I went to Lutzenau and Lutzenau was torn down in the end. The houses were torn down. The village is not standing anymore. But while I was there, every day I was in one of these occupied houses and they were surrounded by cops. Every day I felt I was like charging up, right? Like I went there and I had zero bars. And then I put my, my hands in the movement charger, and I first day one bar, second day two bars, third day three bars, and by the fourth day I had like all four bars, I was like, fucking hell, bring it on, cops! Because they're not doing this, I'm not, not muckering around here, I'm saying it was the movement that gave me strength. What gave me strength? Not the moments of conflict, not the moments of fighting the police, right? Actually, I had a police trauma, I was tortured in the jail cell once. And when we were attacked by the cops, I would always retreat, and I'd start crying and I'd break down. The thing that really charged me, that gave me strength, was the mode of sort of being with each other in the movement. The supportive, solidaristic, open, almost family. And I mean, by the way, I have a shit family. I'm queer, so I'm a queer communist. So I mean like family in the sense of, a, of, a, of an elected family where we're all supporting each other. So this, I realized, was what could give me strength, even in a world where we were losing, where Lutzerat was being torn down around our, our, like around us. I found not just strength and solace, literally my depression ended in Lutzerat. My therapist, when I came back from Lutzerat, told me, dude, you're way too happy to sit in that chair, like you're messing up the vibes. Maybe like, make way for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> he was joking, uh, he's actually a good therapist. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm telling you this because I realized that even in the darkest, darkest moments, even in a place that is being torn down around your face, around, around you, you can find strength in collectivity, in connection, right? And we know what is one of the most powerful and sustainable ways to connect is free and consensual, in my case also ecstatic sexuality, right? That is one of the most powerful ways we can connect. And this is, I think, where... We have to start thinking about what the sex positive, I'm going to say movement, because I don't want to go to the milieu, it's such a boring term. Right, let's call it the sex positive movement, or the movement for fucking and fighting. Um, <laughs> so I'm also being a M sub, so fighting is also part of that. Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> right, so, fascists are so powerful, because unlike most other progressive politics, they appeal to the body. They tell the body, hey, you can be strong, right? If you feel all this disempowerment, right? There's all this globalization processes, COVID, corona, climate, blah, 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 blah. Do you want to feel powerful? Yeah? Sure you want to feel powerful. Bodies want to feel powerful. They want to be connected. They want to do things with other bodies. Spinoza called it potentia, right? But, and potentia not, it's not, but potentia means the capacity to affect and be affected by the world. That's what bodies strive for. And the fascists say, you know, the easiest way to feel strong and powerful is go burn a, a house where, where people live who didn't weren't born here, where, where refugees live, where migrants live. Go beat up some people, some queers, some folks who are not, who, who, some, some, some differently able-bodied, some differently um, uh, able folks. That's their pitch to our bodies. And that is an attractive pitch, because man like left, much like left-wing politics, left-wing politics usually goes to the brain. So fascists go to these parts. Actually, more like these parts, right? We want to own these, but they have kind of these. And basically, the, the, the offer that a sex-positive movement can bring to the world, to the left, to the movement, and to the world, is to say, well, we have a different offer for your bodies. Don't use them to burn down houses and beat people up. Use them to make yourself and others happy. Mm -hmm. now, because that's what sex is about, right? And that's what we can do with sex when it's good, when it's free and consensual and ecstatic. Right? This is what we need to talk about much more, much more 
outwardly. So rather than just, I, this is why I find this festival so good and the invitation, right? I'm, I wasn't saying that you shouldn't go to that festival. You should. And you should have loads of amazing sex and workshops and connections and everything. And I envy you, I can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, plus there's this whole drugs thing that you have a different policy on than I do. We'll so. <laughs> <laughs> talk about that when we come to you, right? But, um, and I'm not challenging your policy, I'm saying that. <laughs> um, so my point is this. There really is an assault coming. The, the, the ecology is fucked and fascism is moving in the global north because it does so structurally, because the global north wants to exclude others. Our role in this is to be part of the alliance of progressive movements that must needs come together. Right? I proposed in the queer and trans movements, I proposed the creation of something that I call the Pink Panthers. The idea was to have a movement where on one hand you do queer movement building, like you meet once a week to do queer movement building, a bar, lectures, reading books together, whatever, partying, and the other week you learn Krav Maga, the Israeli art of hurting people. Because honestly, queers and trans folks are being attacked every day. Climate activists are being attacked more and more. And when I talk about queers and trans people, trans people are being killed, right? The, I don't want to cis the trans experience, but I understand that there is literally an exterminatory project from the fascists against trans people because they say, your existence challenges my fucking male-female binary on which all my ontology rests, on which all my worldview rests. So we're going to have to get rid of you in total. Now, I've heard stories that I want to repeat here, but I just know we must fight in defense of our trans brethren and trans brethren system brothers and everybody else in between here needs to learn how to fight because we will have to fight. We will have to defend ourselves. This is not bullshit. This is all true. But we can't defend ourselves alone. We must band together all the progressive movements. And what the sex positive movement brings to that is an understanding that a liberated society, even a liberated set of movements, cannot exist without a liberated sexuality because, and this is my last substantive point, or maybe a little bit over intellectualized point. Um, why, are, why is sex the most overcoded activity in the world, right? There's so many rules around sex, more than anything else. Now, the traditional sociological explanation is that's because men want to control their... Um, Fertile. Uh, uh, pass, how they Reproduction. Pass their, Reproductive. The, Reproductive. Heritage, yes. Yeah. Who <laughs> inherits their stuff, right? So, so men own everything, right? Patriarchy. So that, well, we want to know whom we can pass it on if, if they're our, our, our gene. Never fully understood that, but especially it's an absurd argument because the most overcoded sex is, of course, queer sex, which the last time I checked generally does not lead to procreative outcomes. I mean, I, my boyfriend did try, but you know. <laughs> so, that being said, if queer sex is the most overcoded of all the sexual activities, that means it is not about procreation, but it is about controlling the body itself. And why is that? Because body, body on body creates the most powerful type of interaction possible. Because of, in a way, bodies, and sort of stördische Materialität, they're kind of, they're, 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 they're resistant materiality. Brains are like software. Any political project can rewrite your brain software. But the body, like, you know, for example, I have this master, and I just wanted to not ever think about my own food needs or drink needs and just think about his needs all the time. After several hours, of course, my body would go like, um, you have no more carbohydrates to, like, you know, massage his feet anymore. So you got to go and eat something. So what I'm saying is that when, when bodies interact with each other, there is the possibility for a liberatory and transformational effect that the system, as it were, to sound really old school, is frightened of. That's why there are all these codes. And this is where the sex positive movement has such an important contribution to bring, to remind progressives of what we knew in the 1970s, that there cannot be a liberated society without a liberated sexuality, that a liberated sexuality is the way to liberate our bodies and bodies and queer theory and feminist theory and black and, 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 and struggles of color have always known this. The body is the key site of resistance. The body is where we start to fight back. And once we decode and decompress that together with each other, we can actually create a fighting force. Because I don't want to lose this fucking struggle. I've lost so many fights. And I'm pretty sure we've lost the climate fight. But I do not concede to the fucking fashion. We have not lost that fight yet. For that, we need all our strengths, and those we can only unlock 
if we can have good sex with each other. Because then we can be fucking each other and fighting the fascists and in the end win a world that's still good for as many people as possible in as many places as possible. Because that is still the goal, a better world for all. you here because yeah um, I think <sighs> yeah stuff to say but I like to share <laughs> um, so thank you all for listening um, <sighs> and um, yeah again the invitation to meet me in the griefing workshop on Friday um, to also process a lot of stuff um, yeah I think I need like a, a moment. I still want to welcome you all to the festival, whoever joining later. Um, if you still need a ride here, I'm sure we can figure something out. I think we're gonna just do something with a check-in about that. Um, yeah. <laughs>